And Saturn, we usually think of for its giant rings, which are, of course, a spectacular feature, but it too has moons in orbit around it. And in fact, here you can even see the moons and their shadows being cast on the, uh, on the again, kind of gaseous surface clouds of Saturn. And then its ring kind of here edge on and crossing through the image. If we zoom in on one particular moon, this is the moon Enceladus. And can everyone see the little streaks here? Any guesses to what those might be? Yes, you. I couldn't quite hear it. Oh. Big holes, ah, good point, yes. So it's actually water coming out from cracks in the, at the south pole of Enceladus. And that water, we've actually flown a spaceship through it. We know that it has interesting chemistry, not just plain water, but interesting other stuff going on in it. And again, this might be not a planet, but a moon where life could exist. But of course, there's a lot more than just planets in our solar system. So we talked about, uh, we of course visited Earth, the third rock from the sun, and Mars, the fourth one, Jupiter and Saturn, the fifth and sixth. But what are all of these? And given the name of the day is today's event, you can probably guess what these are. Asteroids. Now these are the asteroids that we know about in the asteroid belt. And we'll learn a lot more about asteroids, but I just wanted to touch on a few of these objects. This collection of objects that we're going to be learning a lot more about today. This is the second largest asteroid. It's called Vesta. And it turns out that you'll, ha you'll have a chance to, uh, to look at some meteor meteorites uh, at one of our tables set up. Those are little stones from space that have impacted Earth. And about 5%, 1 in 20 of them, came from this asteroid. And we figured that out because it has a relatively unique chemistry. We, we know that these meteorites match that. And that means that and what we understand to happen is a billion years ago, Vesta itself was struck by another asteroid, splintering off lots of stuff that eventually, some of which, hit Earth. And this is the Dawn spacecraft, which is currently orbiting the uh, dwarf planet or largest asteroid series, uh, but earlier visited Vesta. Now, most asteroids are much smaller. We'll be talking about that later on today as well. This is the asteroid Itakawa. And Itakawa is a lot smaller than Vesta. You can see a model of Vesta back at the back table there, but Itakawa is much, much tinier. Vesta is hundreds of kilometers across. This is only about half a kilometer from side to side. But that's still a sizable asteroid if you talk about um, asteroids that would impact Earth. The asteroid that probably did in the dinosaurs was much, much smaller, only about 10 kilometers across. And then there are other interesting objects that we'll touch on today, including uh, this is uh, an image. It's actually a computer model of the comet 67P Churyov Gerasimenko and uh, the spacecraft uh, um, Rosetta that's exploring it. It's just about to make its close approach to the sun in the month of August, and it's a much icier uh, object than the asteroids, and it will uh, be kind of, those, kind of like those jets we saw from uh, Enceladus. We'll be expecting to see a lot of action like that uh, as 67P gets closer to the sun. Now, why do we care about this? Because coming back to Earth just for a moment, and one of the topics that we'll be talking about today is that sometimes objects much smaller than the ones we've talked about today do hit Earth. This is an image of Meteor Crater in Arizona. It's the remnants of a relatively small impactor on Earth, uh, and we're going to be talking about the possibility of that uh, as we go through the rest of the talks today. So now I think I'll be rolling a brief video. I'm uh, looking over to our tech team for signs of affirmation.
Asteroid Day has now become a very definite plan of action. And on June the 30th, uh, we are opening up the petition, which we call 100X, to the public. It's already been signed by a number of, of top scientists around the world and astronauts. And we're asking the public to sign this petition, which will go to the governments of the world to try and get them to prioritise this as a project. 100X means we are trying to ramp up the rate of detection of these possible impacting objects a hundred times. So we need to be a hundred times better at finding these objects than we are now in order to get, get ourselves into a, I was going to say a safe place, but in order to start getting us towards uh, protecting ourselves.